Dr. Tamar Gindin is an Iran expert at Shalem College and at the Esri Center for Iran and Persian Gulf Research. Tamar, I don't think that that assertion uh, from the Iranian regime is going to go too far in uh, calming the anger uh, in the streets, especially the anger that was building up for a long time against the Iranian government. These calls for restraint after that deadly crackdown in November, are they working or are they having impact on the government? As far as I see in telegram channels, uh, there are only plastic bullets, and most of the demonstrations uh, are quelled with uh, tear gas, not with metal bullets. Amnesty International said that the, there are metal bullets and uh, shell shots, but I, on, I only saw really more uh, restraint. And so far, we only hear of arrested people and of wounded people, but not of killings. Well, we'll see how long that holds up. Tomorrow, we have seen some striking pictures coming out of Iran of these protests, those protesters refusing to step on the U.S. and Israeli flags, for example. But in terms of the size and overall intensity, how does this compare with some of the past protests? The November protests were the biggest and most violent since the uh, Islamic Revolution in, the, in 1979. Uh, we don't see the same amount of people in the street. But also, the call for protest doesn't say come at a certain time to a certain place, but just go and demonstrate wherever you are, wherever there are enough people, just go and demonstrate. Because if they say come to a certain place uh, at a certain time, there will be more security people there than protesters. Um, and this time, I also see they, were, they wear more colorful clothes, clothes than the usual protests, which means they're either less afraid or are less used to protest. So we see also different people from the usual protesters. And we also see that uh, in previous protests, they only chanted against the regime. Now they also chant slogans against the IRGC, the Revolutionary Corps. So that uh, leads us to Qasem Soleimani, of course, uh, the Iranian general who was assassinated by the U.S. Uh, there were sort of lots of competing narratives uh, by people, by analysts, sort of looking at what was happening in the streets of Iran after with some saying, look, this is uniting the Iranian public, others saying the opposite. What's your read uh, as to how the Iranian public is reacting uh, in the wake of his death? Against, for, again, from what I see in uh, Telegram channels and on Twitter, there are those who really um, mourned for his death and who really wanted revenge. But from the get-go, there were also people who were rejoicing, making kebab, partying, uh, and telling all the uh, crimes that he, that he made while alive because he had a lot of blood on his hands. Are you surprised at how sort of brazen some of those protests are now, given that hundreds of people were killed the last time around, that it is a, a real sort of act of courage to go out into the streets and protest the regime? And they're saying, we're not afraid to die. We want our freedom. No, we, we're not afraid to be executed. We're not afraid to go to jail. We want to be free. Right. I, uh, Tamar, I wonder we see President Trump tweeting a warning to the Iranian regime not to shoot protesters, expressing support for the demonstrators. What kind of impact do those kind of messages have, either good or bad, or at all, on what's happening in Iran? Uh, on what's happening, I don't know what impact exactly, except that you know they were asked to practice restriction in dealing with the protesters. But I can see the reactions, again, those who support the regime say, you see, it's the Americans who organize all these protests. But in the protester channels, um, they say, see, even Trump is supporting us. And um, it's, it's heartwarming for them, but it's also more dangerous because it uh, discredits the protest. What kind of protests. support is useful? Because when protests like this happen, there's so many people who are just, you know, writing on online, it's time to support the Iranian people. But what kind of support do they need? What kind of support can actually make an impact for the better? Well, when the United States president says, don't kill your protesters, that's good support because they will be more restrictful. But uh, for but Israelis... not dying. Yeah, for, Israelis, for Israeli people, I say, don't express your support because it's another proof and it might make them uh, undergo more severe um, I just, I, Are there pr any practical steps? I have uh, looked at some reports that maybe the U.S. should provide them with some kind of satellite internet. internet. Yes. Exactly. Internet is what they need because 
when when the going gets tough, the internet gets closed. Yeah. Uh, and that is a, a good basic uh, sort of practical message of something that can be done beyond uh, condemnations or yeah, just statements. satellite internet so we can know in real time what's going on. All right, Dr. Tamar Gindin, thanks very much for being here with us. And while all